Hello, welcome to Andre Solo TV. Thank and you. Oh, then. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, welcome you too. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And in here we have here we have an example of uh, a non fuckish person yeah. in the UK, which uh, somehow uh, destroys this uh, idea that all people in Britain are the same, they are all hypocrites and disgusting and repulsive and <laughs> stupid. <laughs> and that's not the case, let's not be xenophobic. There are some people who are nice and cool and great and fucking freaky. Like this very guy who's called Daft mm -hmm. and uh, he's several things apart from not being several others and we'll talk to him about the things he is and not about the things he's not but some of them may be mentioned by him anyway so mm. thanks for coming it's a great pleasure to come yes okay um, <laughs> he um, he's not a I don't refer to him as you but as Jew because he's a Jew a Jew and uh, can you explain us what's this with being a Jew and uh, if it's an ethnic thing if it's um, a religious thing, if it can be both, where it's coming from, how it, what it means for you in your life, and uh, how is it seen uh, as, an, as an international thing, and its implications, and all that stuff. Ah, well, what it, what it is to me is uh, an attempt at freedom in a in a people that are enslaved, and the people that are enslaved is everyone, and it is an attempt at freedom. That's not how it's done. That's not the common way that it's done. It's like a bloodline, ethnicity. It has very little to do with freedom. But, um... They yeah. forgot their roots, like so many other things. Okay, so let's go. What are the roots? Uh, the Torah. The, the, What's the Torah? The Torah is the first five books of what is commonly called the Bible. Um, um, and it's, um, it's a document that was put together Round about 2,000 years ago and has been copied very accurately ever since and studied in a very strange way ever since and it's quite a bizarre document. One of the main stories of it is, uh, is the Moses story with Charlton Heston taking the children of Israel out of Egypt to freedom so that they may worship their goddess and that's, that's the ultimate story, that's the, the myth, the creation well, myth. Charlton Heston the Messiah. Well, yes, okay. but but Messiah is is you see because the, the, there's a there's a, a sort of Christian way of looking at the Messiah as the savior, and uh, it's uh, it's more that uh, the goddess saves us and the Messiah is merely uh, her symbol. Um, uh, well, yeah. Okay. Now mm. go to the point. Go to the point. Yeah. Freedom. Freedom. Okay. Why is it linked to freedom? Because uh, the the very nature of life has has freedom in it. We evolved with freedom. That is what Great Spirit does. She leaves us alone, and uh, but that goes for other people too. Other other people, not just Jews. Ah, ah. We come across our first mis misunderstanding. <clears throat> You're still using a Jew to mean this racist bloodline thing that the that the world tries to to force on it, so that then it doesn't mean anything at all. I, when I say Jew. I mean radical people who wish to be free, wish to make others free, and will not bow to kings. That's what I mean by Jews. Okay, I, so what, what about the, the concept of, uh, of the Jews as, uh, as an ethnic group? Not a, not well, a, it, it's, sort of, it's, it, it's, uh, it's an optimistic thing to think that everybody's children are going to follow the ways of their parents freely. That's an optimistic thing, I so, think, uh, don't you? How, how can you look at the Jews and sometimes say, oh, he looks like a Jew, or they tell you I'm a Jew, and they're like, yeah, you look like one. Uh, because at, at different times there have been different um, enthusiasms in different places with different noses, so that some Jews fit some stereotypes for some people. And again, yeah, I'm using that word Jew in the bloodline way. Uh, not in the the real way, so that, that that's how you get you get these people. They they follow they you know the guilt trip of Mama was a Jew, so I'm a Jew can work for quite a while without being a Jew, and then you get an ethnicity and you get a facial, uh, not stereotype, a facial type, 
Uh, I've got it. This is a, a this face. People call it a Jew face in a lot of places that I go instantly, and I know a lot of bloodline ethnic Jews that don't have this face, and you never would yeah. know unless you came from the place where they were a Jew. But um, so so. Um... So you you don't see a relation a necessary relation between um, being a Jew and religion between Judaism and religion is is mm. being a Jew uh, someone who follows Judaism what's Judaism yeah um, well um, the well the the inherent things of Judaism is is as again it's it's freedom but it, it I suppose it would be done within the context of Torah is anyone doing that. If you're doing freedom without the Torah, are you a Jew? I would think you are. I would think you are. The, the freedom is the bit. Um, the thing that when you say the religion, you, you then are we handing it back to a bunch of white men from Europe who did it a certain way for, for a certain time? No, we're not going to do that. We're going to take it back, back, back from them. And we're going to do it our ways. Yeah, once, at one time, they sacrificed animals to worship the one. And then they moved on to sitting in circles singing, and who knows what we're going to do next, because it's time for a change, clearly. So if it's about freedom, what's the difference between a Jew and a non-Jew? Um, I would say that a non-Jew is, is, sti is re still refusing to leave Egypt and still refusing to leave slavery. Be it being a slave or being a slave owner, they're, they're satisfied with the system and they're not trying on any level even ineffectually. So I'm a Jew. Why? Because I'm not. I left Egypt. Oh yes, you're a Jew. Sorry, I I heard it the wrong way round. I heard left from right. Yeah, I heard you say you're a non-Jew. Yes, yes. Yeah, we are on the same page. Sorry. So yes. I'm a Jew. Absolutely. Of okay, course. this guy is uh, opening my eyes to reality. <laughs> my mother told me I was called Andrew Saulo. Uh, <laughs> <oops. laughs> <coughs> next time I see her, I will I will uh, open her eyes. Mm. Mm. You don't know what you gave birth to. I'm not Andrew Solo. My name is Jew. Jew, fuck you. Jew, Jew, fuck you. Mm. Okay, so you're, you're making... Your... That's not your name, yes? Like, for instance, once you considered yourself to be a punk, yeah? And then you cut off your punkish dreadlocks and considered yourself not to be a punk anymore. Oh, no, not because of that. No, no, not because of that. I'm I'm being sarcastic. But the point, the point that, I, that, that, that for me is... You will always be a glorious white bird. You will always be a punk. Um, you can't. <laughs> you can't really stop. You do it in different ways. Like our various friends who say they're not activists anymore. You do it in their own little individual ways, and it can't be stopped. And that is what well, that those two things: the punk and the activist. That's the Jew. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they tell you they, they they put these cover religions over things to smother spirit, to stop us being free. It serves uh, capitalist patriarchy for everybody to think that Judaism is some boring religion by men, for men, uh, that constrains you and stops you fucking like every other religion has become. That helps you not get to spirit. Okay, you live in London, you live in Hackney, mm. uh, in Hackney there is the third largest uh, Orthodox Jew community in the world after Israel and New York mm -hmm. and uh, we can go walking around the area and we can see lots of people dressed uh, in these black clothes with their things mm. and so so um, do you feel identified with those people? What are those people? What do they have to do with Judaism? Yes, are they the a, real there's Jews? A, there's a line in a psalm, I can't remember the number, I wasn't prepared, and it says, see, see your enemies, see be beloved, uh, um, that's the word I use for the Lord, see how your enemies are destroyed like grass. Yes, I think they are a mistake and they will be destroyed like grass. They are, they are enemies of spirit. Um, I first met them by but I was answering um, a helpline for for gay and lesbian Jews, and that's the o the first, last, and only time I've ever been able to speak to any of those people. So my view of them isn't of their household loveliness, isn't of when it, when they're really getting on and, and 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 happy. My view of them comes from an angry queer place, and no, they are not Jews. Okay. How you treat your queers. 
and how you treat your animals and how you treat your women will always ultimately define you absolutely okay and um so so um, it's not a religion but some people say it's a religion and um, see I'm, I'm having more problems with the term a religion because um you know, as people who are religious or spiritual or whatever, or open to it, they, they don't confine their learnings to one school or one guru or one religion. You know, you, you absorb spirit from wherever it is. And, uh, yeah, um, is it a religion or, I don't know, um, why, why, is, why say you're a Jew? Why not? I don't know why. It, it's getting harder to... to 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 understand why I go on about it, to be honest, but I do. Okay, those people. And the Torah, no, the Torah. I keep. Yes, I could. I would, wouldn't. Couldn't give up Torah. It's too beautiful. Okay. Do the people what? Do is it true? Uh, women, uh, Orthodox Jews, women. Um, do they shave their hair and they put these wigs on? Mm, yeah, they do. A lot of them do that. Shaitels, not wigs. They're called shaitels. Yeah, it's something strange. There's some verse about keeping your glory for your husband or some stuff like that. <laughs> so they cut their hair and they leave it at home for the <laughs> husband. <laughs> the <laughs> husband. Yeah, they I make guess. carpets <laughs> with <it> for the <laughs> husband. <laughs> um, yeah, um, strange. Uh, what about this? Is this a myth or is it true that they have sex through a... a, a, a a sheet. I, I've only ever fucked two of them and we didn't and um, I've thought about that I've never found a, a place because usually these things all have justification in Torah even if they're not written in Torah they'll find a verse and they'll say that's why we do that I've never heard of a justification for that um, I, it's something I've been meaning to try just just to find out I, I think it, I think it, it could have erotic charms. But do you think that, that they do it that the Orthodox Jews or do you think they don't well, yes, you know, you know, um, they, 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 they dress to be ugly, and maybe, and maybe, maybe they need to hide from each other, and they, and they marry to make babies for the Lord, not, not because they're attracted to each other or anything. So maybe they, maybe, maybe they need it. I don't know whether they have it or not. Um, I would doubt it seriously. The other, the other times I've met those people is through stories from my Krakow friends, and. Um, they never mentioned a sheet. Okay, um, some people, some people um, relate uh, Jews to Israel, and they claim that the uh, Jews are uh, killing Palestinians. And uh, first they were killed by the Nazis in the Second World War, and now the Jews are doing the same. And I'm a bit fed up with this because it's like. Uh, it's it's a country with a government um, probably most people there are Jews but f not all of them support the government and definitely not they are not representing Jew the Jew community so wh what would you say about that okay if, we, if we're talking about Jews as the whole bloodline bunch um, then yeah that because that's what that's how they did it's like with the Indian reservations they've the, the, the white people have imposed um, a racial genetic definition of, of the tribe onto the red people when that was never their way. And, the, and they, 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 they've imposed this definition of Jews onto the Jews um, for the state of Israel to be a Jew state. Um, according to, to Jew myth, there isn't supposed to be a Jew state until the Messiah comes, and the Messiah isn't supposed to come and, you. until there's world peace. Me? What? Yeah, you are the fucking messiah. That's oh, why we're interviewing you. Well, I'm, I've come early. I'm not supposed to be here until there's world peace. Or the world peace is late. It's uh, all gone horribly it's wrong. It's going to be brought by you. Ah. Ah, oh, no, that's the Christian messiah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Jewish messiah comes once all the work is done. She's more of a Jewish princess. When the world peace is here, she comes to say to criticize and say, "Well, that took a lot too long, and I don't like what you've done here." That's more the Jewish Messiah, I believe. We'll see. Okay. Uh, by now, I think that, that uh, none of you got any of this. Israel, uh, you you interrupted me about Israel. Oh, okay, sorry. Yes. yes, um, yes 
Yes, all states don't represent the people, they represent power. Um, that's something as a species we need to sort out, really. Um, this, you know, um, in, in the, in the, this, the sidelines of this racist bloodline Jew thing, I've met, um, I've met like uh, semi-radical rabbis who, because of the state of Israel, they could, they could um, define somebody as a Jew because they could do this converting thing. So they could help somebody become a Jew and then get a passport in a state. And that's maybe some sort of empowerment uh, to some little bits of the Jewish left left. But most of the state of Israel is just, you know, the same warfare as all other states. And it really doesn't, you know, it gets mentioned much too much so that we forget the atrocities being done to the Cheyenne right now. It, it, you know, the, the overemphasis of one Holocaust erases all the others, and that, that's offensive to both. It's, it's sick and nasty and offensive to both. Um, how else does the state of Israel work? There were little Jewish cultures, these racial bloodline so-called Jewish cultures in every country, and then they went to Israel to become Americans. That's uh, uh, another little condemnation of Auschwitz, I mean Israel. Okay, so let's move on. And um, what can you tell us about uh, other drugs apart from Judaism? Uh, do you take some? Uh, did you take some? Will you take uh, some? Drugs. How you drugs, think of them? Drugs covers uh, such a spectrum of everything from from downers to psychedelics, and um, it's it's, uh, it's it's different conversations. It's many different conversations. There's um, different drugs to be taken at, di at different times for different reasons. There's uh, different levels of involvement with drug taking. There's people who take too much and need some support. There's people who don't take enough. Okay, I'll make questions. Um, yes. Um, when did you start taking drugs? Which drugs did you start taking? Ah, I th I, when I was uh, 14 or so, I there was a bag of drugs. Grandma had been dead for 10 years or something and I went into the bag of her drugs and stole the barbiturates and I was off my head and gouging for a week. It was so beautiful. Okay. Uh, I don't remember anything before then. Okay, when did you start taking other drugs apart from grandmas? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well in the next few years after that I started babysitting for people and they were always good drugs in their... In their there was always bottles of thing, interesting things to be stealing. And then I got into stealing drugs and that was my pharmaceutical phase. And then when I was like 18 I got into marijuana and mushrooms and left my pharmaceuticals behind for many years. Um, okay, and then you mm, you got into heroin and crack and stuff like that. Oh, later, later, later. I'm like, that's more like in my 30s and 40s I believe. Okay, and... Yeah. and uh, some people have uh, lots of prejudice about this and they think that if you just take heroin once or a few times then you get uh, hooked on it and uh, uh, how is that? Did you uh, Have you ever been hooked on it? Um, I think all the people I know who are hooked on it at one point they made the decision to be hooked on it and I made a decision way before ever taking it never to be hooked on it and whether these decisions are good decisions or bad decisions they seem to be things that we hang on to um, some some people who take these drugs use them as an excuse to be bad people and um, I don't understand that really um, if you need to be a bad person just do it don't blame something else don't blame your mother don't blame the drugs just be a bad person just own up just carry it yeah um, yeah um, the physical addiction thing doesn't doesn't leave people looking very good the medical profession won't see heroin addiction as a medical problem and they won't treat it, they give methadone and that's evil and murderous and, and, and it makes criminals out of people who don't all, they don't all know what they're getting into. I, I sometimes am very judgmental of people who get into drugs and do it stupidly but people are stupid and um, to force pe stupid people, a lot of people who are into drugs also are, are, should be into mental health um, and 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 they, they rather than spend any money on them, we let them become heroin addicts. It's uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on there as drugs. Um, I like to think that my drug taking was always celebrational and fun. A lot of it was, a great deal of it was. Yeah, 
I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so what 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 about crack? Mm. Is it is it like uh, very 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 fucking mega addictive? Is it like a yeah? There's that like when you're smoking it. There's a full hour when once it stops, once it ends, when you really want some more. And if you don't get say a sandwich in that time. You're probably gonna go and get some more money out of the bank or something. It's very important for the, for the, to have a sandwich. Then I mean, I tried it without sandwich, and it was it was fine. I mean, oh, yeah, okay, you... okay. Uh, no, uh, yeah, but you you had other things to to fall back on, did you not? Yes, 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 yes. yes. So yes, if you have other things, that's uh, and that's one of the dangers of crack. Is of course one of the other things to fall back on is heroin, and it's usually available from the same vendor. And the temptation is there, and it, it, it leads you into a heroin habit because uh, I don't think crack is addictive. You don't think crack is addictive? No, I know and people can get addictive to anything, addicted to anything, but I don't think that makes the thing addictive. I think uh, it's the people. Crack touches the sexual parts of people's brains, and people are very fucked up about their sex. So if they find something that they can do instead of crossing all those terrifying boundaries between sitting alone and having good sex with someone you like, uh, if you can't do that, crack works pretty well. I think the people are sex addicts and the crack is covering that. That's my honest opinion. Okay. Um, so now, yeah, tell us about, about uh, your... about your gayness mm -hmm. and, uh, and how... Mm, the interaction with the non-gay society has been and uh, whether the Jew education had something that made it worse or made it, made it easier or mm. yeah all that stuff. Well yeah. you know there, there were very few Jews in my in my life. Um, our next door neighbors were bloodline Jews and there was an aunt and another neighbor and so that's like four Jews uh, my sister's parents took it really badly, the gay thing. They wanted to kill themselves. Um, the neighbour slightly further along the road was a bit prurient and... and, and ooh, she was all sort of... Ugh, I wanted to kill her. Um, Auntie Julie died before we could tell her. And the next door neighbour, she just was a liberal jewel and, and it was cool for her. She just thought it was cool. And it was, and it is, and she is. So. Yeah, I think that's the the, the point about, about Judaism is it, it there's no spirit, there's no teaching, there's no religion there. There's just a bunch of people without any spiritual guidance. They haven't been taught to care about each other or themselves. Um, and one of them wasn't, didn't pick up on homophobia. Pam. Thanks, Pam. Um, so I, I don't think there is a religion there. There is a religion there, but it's not associated with the the people that call themselves Jews. There's, there's, no, there's no evidence. I've spoken to so many people who have done a bar mitzvah and the person who taught them how to sing the portion of Torah didn't think to teach them what it meant or find out what it meant to them or anything. Which is kind of like Torah is dead. I, I haven't met another Jew. I'd be interested to meet another Jew. Um. And what about the rest of society? How how did the, the the rest of society relate to the gay issue throughout forty four years? Well, um, I I I I suppose um, after I was about eighteen, I quickly learned to find ghettos of tolerance and not mix with with machos. I suppose. Um, so you 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 dealt with it through through living in ghettos, if, if you mm. lived uh, in like the mainstream uh, well, I, society. I was never really invited. Okay, but and it, I never felt so what, any, any impetus to go there, like, you know, the, the normal people, they, it, wasn't, it wasn't possible for other, many other reasons. Yeah, yeah. But for many other gays, uh, how do you think it was before and how do you think it is ah, now? Okay, okay. Um, Oh, I, I suppose like a normal person in a normal job, there are there are normal. It's now normal to think of gays as having rights, or gays as having you know, twenty percent off cards for their gay lover. Uh, uh, normal, normal little jobs and normal little things, little things like that are no longer. Ooh, it's just things of of the, the tolerance has come through the only route possible that is boredom. It's in every sitcom and every and. Uh, I mean, it's done badly. It's really done badly, and and the TV representations of gays are still homophobic as fuck, 
I can't believe it. And I can't believe that all that homophobia has bred tolerance. But it has, because just going on about it, even in a bad way, has... has yeah, like, yeah. They, keep, they keep showing this stereotype of, of a gay person uh, behaving in a certain way, liking certain things. And that, that, but there's also the, the stereotype of uh, two guys, and, oh, oh, the homo things there. Oh, isn't that disgusting? That would be yeah, terrible. Yeah. And oh, wouldn't that be terrible? And that's... The, the almost the, the 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 gay joke that's it's constant. The last uh, 146 men that I fucked didn't find them define themselves as as gay before, during, or after, um, and, and and many of them in having sex with me would be would come up to some sort of issues of oh I'm gay or oh, I don't want to be gay or does this mean I'm gay and uh, I think I think the bifurcation of humans into into gay and straight is a very fucked up. Very, yeah. There's hardly anybody who fits those two categories, hardly anybody, but but it makes us all comfortable because uh, uh, the, 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 the severe homos don't have to pretend that they've ever thought of pussy and the, the heteros don't have to pretend that they've had a homo moment. They can pretend that it's them. They do it and we don't have to. Phew. Lies, damned lies and crack cocaine to cover the lies. Okay, um, now I'll give you some very brief moment for mm. you to add uh, something if you want to this. Mm -hmm. And uh, some, you can explain other things in your life that have been important to you, that uh, have shaped you as a person. Um, mm. yeah. Well, you know, um, being gay and, and, uh, isn't, isn't something, it's something I chose to be because I was from the age of five, fantastically angry at the heterosexual assumption, at, at the, the snide comments the, uh, and the, and the over-sexualization that heterosexuality enforces on everything. Everything is sexualized and heterosexualized. And, and being an angry queer sex warrior my whole life, that's, that's been a, a, a great shaping factor. Um, being defined as, 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 as gay already enabled me to try anything else out that was defined as bad because I no longer believed their definitions. So, so one thing leads to another and that's, another, that's, a, that's a good thing. I don't know, what you said, what should I talk about? <laughs> I'm talking about things, now I'm drifting. <sighs> things that have shaped my life are ah, the psychedelia that did shape my life and has shaped my life and does but how to talk about that? No, you don't have mm. to. Go on. Okay. Torah has also shaped my life. Um, it's not that I didn't have morality before, but for me, morality in the context of the great goddess, of great spirit, is a slightly different shape and a slightly different satisfaction. Well, it's, it's, uh, for some people, it would be weird to hear you talking about the goddess. Uh, tell us something about that. Ah, um, well... Before, before the goddess was masculinized 10,000 years ago, we were a peaceful, artistic um, society of, of world citizens. And we only ate potatoes. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Yeah, we only ate potatoes and we hugged each other. There were no, war. there were no wars. There we, were we, no we, wars. We went to war there and we no met the wars. others. We just threw the things around and we were like, were come no on, wars. are you going to kill me with this face? There were no wars. Uh, we didn't protect ourselves with beauty. We protected ourselves by being fierce warriors, but that's a long way from having wars. So what about the goddess? Did she eat potatoes? Or? <laughs> did, she eat, did the goddess eat potatoes? The goddess is potatoes. Oh. And she is eating potatoes. Of okay, course. so, so uh, you, you, you say they, they masculinized uh, the, the, the goddess. Okay, but it's, it's, it's not simply a process of masculinization and feminization as if these are equal and opposite. These are not equal and opposite. The goddess wasn't a fictional thing that we had to believe in. She was our bodies. She is our bodies. She is a potato. She is the earth. She is the spirit that goes between all these things. Um, then they, they, they masculinized it, colonized it, and turned it into something fictional that made it bad to masturbate, yeah? It was okay to masturbate under the goddess, even if you thought about other people with similar genital parts as your own. Shocking horror, isn't it? I know. I, 
Do you need a minute? <laughs> no, we have a few. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> So goddess, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm loath to talk about it also because I know that that um, the rest of the world is going to pick up on the fact of the human religious worship being goddess centered for the for thousands and thirds, thousands of years before the ma male thing screwed it up. And I know that when they pick up on this, they're going to do goddess worship, and they're going to do it really badly. And so goddess is going to mean something worse than god in ten minutes. So I'm, I'm, I'm loath to use the word, I'm loath to use any words, I'm loath to talk to humans at all. Are there any humans there that could ever understand anything worth understanding? And if they are, they already understand it. There's nobody to save and there's nobody to talk to. Okay. Uh, something else you want to add? Uh -huh. <laughs> After that negativity, um, <laughs> I, uh, give me a clue, give me a subject. Um, food. You eat one. Uh, you are you are one of the people that I know who eats best. Mm -hmm. uh, you eat uh, uh, lots of raw stuff, yes. but uh, you eat boiled stuff. You. Mm, well, I try. I try. Uh, recently, the boiled stuff. I've tried to restrain it to just a few a few grains of all my vegetables. But you are not frying stuff, no anything. Uh, again, again, that's an addiction, and it's a principle. And every every week or so. I break that rule because I haven't oh. um, overcome the frying addiction. And I'm interviewing you. Mm. <laughs> but yes, but you no, it, tell it, me it, first. it is an addiction. No, well, I said I'd given it up when I was being successful and then I had a bad day, you know, like you do uh, well, with addiction. Yeah, everybody does, yeah. So, yeah, occasionally I do, but, but mostly the skills are getting there. And also, um, I have a new lover that I'm showing off to. That really helps because for years I've been picking up food wisdoms from food freaks from my little ghetto. And I've learned a lot of amazing stuff. Uh, but you, to, to, you learn to be a celiac. Um, you call it? Do you pronounce it like celiac. that? Celiac. Um, celiac. I don't know if I learnt to be a celiac. I think that's a very good. You and Mr. Oak can they both think that, but no, I don't know about that. Okay. 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 And then you are you are, you can eat these solanaceous. How do you pronounce them? Solanums. Solanums. Mm, solanums that, that, and gluten. That, 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 well, I mean, the sol so, solanums are plants uh, like tomatoes potatoes. and peppers, toma uh, potatoes, aubergines. aubergines, and we don't know of any more. But. Well, deadly nightshade and tobacco, but um, yeah. yes, I, well, I mean, taking me away from those things, my body gave up gluten and solanums, and that enabled me to, to open up to true freak food. Yeah? Apart from the fact that he doesn't eat animals for. Well, of course. I mean, of course. That's the, animals aren't really food. Yeah. That's. I was talking about food. Food. But veganism is 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 food, and veganism is cash root, and and you can't you can't. There's no way of of stealing milk nicely. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Um. What was they saying? Something about food. Yeah, <laughs> being a celiac and stuff like that. Ah, uh, yeah. That led me to free food and 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 a diet that's not so dissimilar from most of the cancer survivors that I've met. Um, lots, lots of amigas, lots of flax. Oh, flax! Oh, in Spain we have lots of amigas also. Yeah. You do? Yeah, oh, and amigos. Amigos. Yes, amigos yes, too. my amigo. Very nice, very nice. You know, people need more amigos. Are you <laughs> sure they do? They just use that word, and they mean acquaintance. Mm. So uh, yeah, I'll tell you to fuck off now. Uh -huh. And uh, thank you very much for being on Andre Solo much. TV. Yes, a great and pleasure. It's been a, a pleasure too. Thank you. And I'll have to edit that because you don't. Go on, go on, go on, edit it, yes. Okay. Mm.